Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Brookfield uh, Select Board meeting for February 16, 2023. Please rise and say pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Okay, announcements. I don't see it written on here, but I'm going to add an announcement, um, though Kelly helped me out. Um, the next election, the papers are available for people to draw. Yes. And I know there's at least planning board, select board, library trustees. I think the announcement is on the internet. It's, it's actually on the town web page. One second, and I will tell you exactly what's what and where. Great. Why? While you're looking that up, um, I, I just want to indicate that we're approving the previously signed warrants uh, FY 2023 20, 16 AP for $487,975.54. Uh, FY 2316 payroll $190,881.69. And fiscal year 2316 withholding warrant for $29,917.32. Alright, so here are your terms and people. Okay. And if you scroll up, it'll tell you the, the dates. Taking out the paper. And the okay, dates. as of February 6th, nomination papers for Brookfield Annual Town Election will be available at the town clerk's office. Um, the following offices and terms are open to candidates, moderator one year term, selectman three year term, assessor three year term, um, planning board five year term, elementary school committee three year term, water commissioner three year term, board of health three year term, board of health one year term, trustee for Merrick Public Library uh, two and three year terms, and then uh, cemetery commissioner three year term and tax collector three year term. Uh, the deadline to return the papers is March 13th. Um, last day for the registrars to certify those papers is the 27th. Um, and last day for candidates to withdraw without appearing on the ballot is the 27th of March. Last day to register to vote is the 21st of April, uh, which is uh, 10 days prior to the election. Um, any questions about any of that? And the election itself will be May 1st of 2023 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, for in-person voting. All right. Um, first person on the agenda is the Highway Department relative to uh, DER uh, Colvert Grant. Can you just give your name, even though most everybody sure. knows who you are? I'm Barbara. I'm the superintendent. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. All right, so can I start? Yeah, please. Uh, so I gave you guys the this is a cost estimate. It was updated about three weeks ago for the uh, rice corner for us for all the culvert. And um, we would like to apply for a grant uh, between the highway department and Kathy LaRocca. Um, I feel like we're going to have to put some more money towards it. To, to, the grant's really not designed to be fully funded by the state, so I think the town would have to put some money forward. And uh, if you want to, Kathy and I thought that might be like the contingency of $56,711. Now, is this the culvert over where you were talking about, like at the end of that cul-de-sac kind of? Is this, no, no, uh, this no, is different? This is a different one. So uh, last year, we actually got a small grant for this exact same culvert to bring it back. So it's back up again. Uh, probably about five years ago, we had a design done for this grant um, before I was here. And then that permitting and the design and everything went out of date. So then they gave us another grant to bring it back up to speed um, with permitting and design and all that stuff. This past the OT permit that had to be updated. So 
that's all been done. So now we're basically shell ready, and the next step is to is to apply for a construction grant. Okay, so let me restate what I think I heard. Is that um, you're looking to apply for this uh, Division of Ecological Restoration grant, yeah. and it specifically aligns on culverts. Yeah. Our project, absolutely, if it was running perfect to current quoting, would be just under the $400,000 threshold, which is typically their max. Right. And while hypothetically you could 100% fund the project, what you're looking for is kind of a nod to pursue the grant for the estimated cost, understanding that typically you put a contingency amount on top of any project, right? And that you'd be looking to uh, put probably on the warrant, I would assume as a warrant article, the 15% contingency associated with the project. Yeah. And, and that would encourage transparency because we're not just going to bake it into Chapter 90 or bake it into highway expenses. We're going to say, hey, yeah. this is the project, this is the grant, this is the amount that we want to ask the town to support it. And, and you know, it's kind of like a good faith thing going after the construction since they just gave us the money right. last year to, to bring it up to speed. And it was way too long and we don't apply in this grant cycle. We'll be back to where we're. No, I, I think it's I think it's great that we're like basically following the cycle and I hate to put it this way, chasing the dollars to bring yeah. it back to the yeah. town. So, so um, when is the application due? So <clears throat> any day now they're gonna the RFR is gonna come out. It was supposed to come out actually today. We didn't see it. So any day now we can it says the estimated date is mid March, but it's not actually live yet. Okay. So, you know, the, the for town meeting or whatever, however we fund the 56, we could be contingent on getting the grant. Right, right, so absolutely. We get the grant first. Yeah. So and yeah, we could we could put it on the warrant if we get the grant if the if we get the grant and the grant information comes back prior to town meeting, we can let folks know. The oh. award wouldn't be until July or after. Okay. So, so the vote could be con allowing us to set it aside contingent on getting the grant. Yeah. Those are, those are generally decently received, especially when 85% of the budget would be coming from the state. Yeah, exactly. All right, so what do you need from us tonight? Do you want us to vote to go ahead and, and set this aside as a warrant well, article for the, for the I would town just meeting? Like the support or the, you know, just to pursue the grant, put in the application, and then, and then probably uh, follow through with putting something through for the money for town meeting. Um, and you're already working with Kathy on this, so she's aware of it. This isn't going to be a surprise. Okay. okay. So, so a motion to pursue the grant. Okay. To authorize Ryan and Kathy to pursue the grant, and then uh, I guess a promise to keep the put the warrant article on to cover the cost. Okay. So. So I'll make a motion for Ryan and Kathy to pursue the grant and put a warrant article for the funds if needed. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's a deal. Thank you for bringing this forward. And thanks for <laughs> following up on going that way. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have anything else specifically for you? Um, you know that the Kimball Road, the Kimball Road hearing is, but it doesn't start until <laughs> 7, so if... Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, next item on the agenda for public hearing is a vote on early voting for the next election. Um, so let's talk about this one. The early voting automatically happens unless you vote not to do it. This is only for the local election. Um, the town clerk's office was in, was completely overwhelmed the last time, and it, they, they're asking that you vote not to approve early voting for the local election. Um, 
So say that it's to the election so did, committee. Did he, did he provide any information regarding how many people did vote by mail and how many people did come in for early voting versus? Um, he did not. No. Okay. And and what's 45 days before the election at this point? Like well, the we election. Just, we just looked at what the election right. Date so 45 was, so. days beforehand is what middle of. It's May, April is 30 days. May 1st is the election So we have day. until the middle of March to make that decision, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the registrars have already voted not to do it. What, not to have early not voting? Not to have early voting, yeah. So you can you can get more information from him and put it on your next meeting agenda. I, I, would, I would like to do that, because I would like to know how many people we might be limiting their accessibility to voting by not allowing early voting because it sounds like early voting um, would also include vote by mail because the way this requirements piece is written that was included in your email it indicates vote by mail is required for all elections including special elections and preliminaries unless the selectmen board of selectmen you know vote to opt mm -hmm. out so um, it does sound like no excuse vote by mail is available it's See, always it's available for federal it's and always state. Available for it's federal. just the local. Right. But I mean, we get such little participation in local elections anyway. How many people are we going to are going to opt out of voting if they don't have the mail-in voting option? I don't know that I feel really good about that. So what happens if you vote yes and, and the registrars vote no? Now you have what's the, I don't know what the yeah, end right. result to then that you have is. an issue. Can we ask them to come to the next meeting and have a discussion around it? The town clerk and the registrars, or just the town clerk? Either, or, both. Okay. Invite them both. We'd like well, either or, or both. Okay. But I, and I understand, I understand what they're saying, and I understand it's a burden, but it's also, um, if it's that hard, we need to figure out how to make it easier, is my opinion. What? Besides not doing it, is there any way to make it more efficient and easier for them? What do we need to do? So, um, okay. So vote to appoint special municipal employees. I mean, I mean, you're welcome to. No, no, question, I'm on the same page. No, okay. I. I, yeah, I the, with, are you talking about the special municipal? No, 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 no. No, I was back. Okay, I thought. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to make a motion, that's fine. But there's two of us, so we'd be have a hung jury. <laughs> no, I mean, if half, if there was a lot of people that took advantage of it, and now all of a sudden you're shutting it off, you're potentially alienating a lot of people. Yeah, and 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 I don't know. I just I'm not comfortable with that unless I know what the metrics look like. So. You know, let the public. Can I do this? Just public hearing, right? On this topic. Oh, yes. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. Do you have an opinion? Yeah, I mean, sir? If, if you got a voting date, people should just be able to come and vote on that day. What are we going to have to vote two months not everybody, in advance? Not everybody, not everybody works local. Okay, so they can, they can come in a week or something, like 45 days, two months ahead, or what? Say, no, that's, not, the, that's, that's not what it is. It's not that there's early voting for 45 days. In order to not, in order to opt out as a community from any form of early voting, we have to we have to vote no less than 45 days prior to the election to not do any amount of early voting. Yeah. Okay. Now the early voting itself, I think, is usually like a week or two beforehand. It's not 45 days early. It, there's there's. No, it's definitely not 45 days early, but I, I don't know exactly what the timeline is. It's and it's a lot more complicated to do the early voting yeah. and expensive, but I'll let them express right. It's, that. Right. So. I, I would rather. Because I don't have, have any of the actual numbers, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'd like to know what's the actual cost, how many people avail themselves of the early voting. I hate to put it this way, if they were overwhelmed by it, that means probably quite a few people did it. <laughs> Maybe we need to get better at it. I don't know. It is 2023. We should be able to figure this out. So, um, I 
think we should be in encouraging public participation, not trying to limit it, so long as people are registered voters. So, um, I have an empty folder around appoint special municipal employees. You do, and the reason being is I wanted it on the agenda because I was hoping that we could do a blanket vote appointing, making all of the positions who qualify under the statute special municipal employees without having to go through and figure out which ones are and which ones aren't because the statute's very specific with, and it, but it allows for certain circumstances. The ethics rules apply differently to special municipal employees than they do, which allows people to hold more than one position and not have it be a conflict and other aspects of working for a municipality. However, the Ethics Commission has said that you have to specifically enumerate the position. So I don't ah, believe so under my research, today. which I finally found something definitive this afternoon, um, I don't believe that we can do it that way. We have to do it by the position itself. Okay. They have to be specifically listed because it says specifically enumerated. So my reading of that is that it needs to be, and we don't have a list of who is now or what positions are and what positions are not. They cannot currently put their hands on the list, which is, I'm gonna reach out to the Ethics Commission because they were supposed to file a copy of it with them as well. And then we'll be able to start going through and appoint, making these positions special municipal. Got employees. it. Fabulous. So the process has started. The process has begun, yes. Wonderful, because we need to make sure that the same 13 people that do everything are legal to do everything. Exactly, my <laughs> point. Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's not 7 p.m. yet, so we're going to skip over item four and continue down um, to item five, the liaisons discussion. We could, liaisons we could discussion. probably pass over that without Tom being here. Okay. So we're going to pass over that. Um, budget review. That could be quite timely. Would you like to complete the rest of the... Um, <laughs> we can skip over that and come back to we it and come take back it out to of order. And look okay. at the resignations. Let's look at the resignations. Um, we currently have three resignations. We have one from Reserve Officer Daniel Driscoll uh, as of the 13th of February. Um, and uh, he just hasn't been able to make time for us as a as a uh, part-time police officer because he's got a full-time job as a firefighter now. Um, so we thank him for his service. He's been with us since April of 2018, uh, and he's been a good officer. So I presume we would accept his his letter with uh, regrets and send him a nice note thanking him for his service. Um, we have Danielle. Orboza resigning from Cultural Council uh, due to a schedule change um, that she she's no longer going to be able to participate and then we also have one from Lois O'Leary relative to the 350th um, committee um, she plans on helping with the events but just isn't, uh, is uh, going to leave the committee portion of it to others we accept all three of those with regrets, and can we send those out letters? Mm -hmm. I think we need to vote on that. No. So we do have one appointment for the 350th anniversary committee for a Mr. Donald Taft. Yep. Can I do we know him? <laughs> Is he? <laughs> so, so I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Donald Taft to the 350th anniversary committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We have um, a cemetery deed uh, for a lot. He uh, doesn't do the lots anymore. Right. He said he just does the names. Oh, okay. It says lot that. number 11 A section C. Well, he wouldn't give me a <laughs> number. He told me he was a child that way. But so, okay. uh, so, can I get a motion to sign the? Cemetery deed for 
make a motion to sign the cemetery, cemetery deed for lot number 11A, section C in the Brookfield Cemetery. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Several sets of select board minutes to approve, one from 126.23, one from 22.23, and one from 418.17. Did you get a chance to review them in advance? Yeah. Great. So, can we get a motion about those? Uh, so, I'll make a motion to approve the select board minutes for 126, 2023, 22, 2023, 418, 2017. Second, all in favor? Aye. Because the law the law requires that all minutes be approved and we're kept playing catch up from prior years where they weren't. So even though we no oh, no no oh, no no we've been doing we've been doing basically almost every meeting we've had whatever ones we had from this year plus one from 2017 sometimes two. So, and we don't, and by law, we didn't have to have been there to approve the minutes so long as we have reasonable expectation that they're an accurate rendition of what occurred at the meeting. So if we choose to, we can, in most instances, review the tapes and go check That's that out. That's actually how the minutes are being done. Karen's actually reviewing the tapes and doing the minutes from the recordings. So, um, and then uh, can I get a motion to acknowledge the cult cultural council minutes from 1923? I uh, make a motion to acknowledge the Cultural Council minutes for 1-9-2023. Okay, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And it looks like uh, according to what came out of that, we're going to be having McGann's Marching Band and Lincoln Minutemen for Memorial Day. So, things move along. Um, since we can't have the public hearing until 7 p.m., let's start the budget discussion, and then we can put the budget discussion on pause for sure. the public hearing. So I have compiled all of the information sent and put in a spreadsheet, and I shared it with the board yesterday after trying to make sure all the numbers were right and consistent with what I was given. I also sent it to all the boards, committees, department heads, anyone, I hope I didn't miss anyone, but everyone who submitted a budget you go, should have budget back. gave them, I sent them the same spreadsheet that I spent, sent to you for transparency purposes. So you're all seeing the same thing at the same time. I did ask them to reach out if there were any typos. Um, I did get an update from the library yesterday, okay. which was not entered into the data. So that is now in the new one that you have. There's an update in that. Um, okay. The library trustees voted on the 13th to incorporate the um, longevity pay into the base pay for the director. Okay. So there's longevity is... Right, it's part of something that was voted, yeah, at town meeting to right. include. Right, yep. and so that's something that it, it longevity is a thing that you get for being there. It's not, it shouldn't be part of your base pay or, or it normally isn't part of your base pay because every time you get your raise, it includes, it's bumped up on top of the longevity as well. Ew. And so when you put it in the budget itself, it can be in the budget, so she'll absolutely get it. But right. next year, the percentage will be the percentage plus the longevity plus more longevity. Oh, I see you what see what's saying. happening? Yep. So it's actually being kind of double counted or, or well, not double counted, well, but it, well, it's I think I think let's table that in in what and talk about it with regards to because the reason to incorporate it that way is that for for tax purposes for the people receiving it, they don't get like a one time like hit with regards to their taxes. Um, 
and that might have been the intent without realizing yeah, that the I'm sure result there was, would have there been was no right. ill yeah. intent whatsoever, no. so, but so, just something but I, to I think, think about. But I think that's part of the, we could always do, let's, when we, well, and actually this is part of this discussion, because when we start talking about the wage increases, um, that's one of those things that could be backed out before the percentage increase is calculated on an annual basis when, yeah. we, when we did that individuals like this pay year I have a warrant article um, for the longevity as a lump sum for everyone who qualifies for it okay the library in, is, is included in that got it so okay. I, that all will need to be corrected but that's a warrant article that I because it's not part of salary it's basically a thank you right right, right. so um, and, and a reward for staying with the town and being would, should that be a warrant article or where it would functionally be a recurring expense should it be on the operational budget but as a separate line item I put it on a warrant article not because it needs to stay there I put it there so I wouldn't forget to do it got it because I didn't know about the longevity when we did last year's budget or the warrant Ah. And it was brought to my attention afterwards that everyone was supposed to be getting longevity who qualified for it. So I threw it in my, my I, so I started the warrant like the day after last year's town meeting. Right. <laughs> and I started putting in warrant articles as placeholders to remind me. To so wherever you want to put that, it can go there. I'm just letting right. you know that it's already been calculated. It's already baked, baked in and calculated. Yeah, it's Got baked it. in. And it's a raise and appropriate, so it'll be... Part right. It doesn't, it doesn't it's, matter functionally. It's more of a case of it mm -hmm. just... Yeah, so that's something to think about. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got the police uh, budget me. today. Uh, a question about this longevity pay. Did you say uh, a scope on how many people that applies to? What, what are the criteria? No, I, because I don't know those numbers off the top of my head. Um, and, and that wasn't... That's something that's in... Um, the it was town's a bylaw you know, that we it was bylaw. A bylaw that we voted last year, and so it's got to get paid regardless. But I don't know the numbers off the top of my head because I did the calculation. Like I said, I did this last year when I started this year's warrant, and it's a placeholder. So, can you just forward that information to the? Oh yeah, sure. Can you explain that a little bit more when you're Yeah. Um, it's something we voted at town meeting last year, and I don't remember the scale. We'd have to pull up the copy of the bylaws to go look it up, but I think it starts at like, I think it's at, I don't know if it's at 5, 10, or what have you, but at different year levels, there's a, okay, the first one starts at 5. Um, it's pretty nominal at that point, but it's something. And basically, when you hit a certain number of years of service, you get a you get an annual Let's call it stipend for having reached that level. And what's the stipend? It varies based on well, the let's range. Say five years. Let's say ten years. Well, that's pull the thing. The we don't. We don't have pull those numbers without the bylaw. We pulling it up. It wasn't. It wasn't explicitly on the agenda. It's available publicly if you want to look it up, or we can have it at the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, look at it at the next meeting. It sounds like more free money being given away by the town of Brookfield. It sounds like something that the town of Brookfield voted to give their employees at the last town meeting. So it's not for us to say whether it's right or wrong because the townspeople spoke. Yeah, it's my, it's that, I just said the way I see it. That's the way you see it, that, but the townspeople I spoke. I have the right to speak. Uh, I'm a resident and that's how I see it. Well, we appreciate your opinion. Actually, technically this is not part of the public hearing, so no, you don't. So, um, though through me, I, through me I, can, I can provide a little bit of leeway to allow you to speak um, on that one. But anyway, um, you're welcome. Um, all right, so let's get back to the to the topic at hand with regards to the budget. So this is okay. before everybody at this point, correct? Yes. Okay. It, it, well, yes and no. So I updated it with the police. Okay. Information, yep. the, the new library information. Okay. And but that hasn't gone out to the other boards because I just got that like literally this afternoon. Um, for the uh, PD, so we have a larger base number, and I asked the other, like I said, I asked the other boards and committees to check what I had put in the spreadsheet to make sure that I didn't transpose anything or miss a number. Or um, so what you're looking at for the bottom line on the last page, if it's voted exactly as presented. 
currently does this 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 doesn't have anything baked in for salaries yet, correct? Or no? What's what is so currently? these columns here? This is your column, and this is advisory's column. Okay. This is what was requested That's only, what was and requested. some people didn't know what to request, so they level funded their budget okay. for salary. Some people. Um, went with the with the federal cola because that was was stated at uh, previous meetings, and some people put in like three percent, some put two and a half, some put seven, some put nine. So it's all over. So the it's board. all over the board, which is fine. People can put in what they what they want to want. request. It's yep. up to you to decide if you want well, to apply a specific cola across across the board. Um, that's that's up to the selectmen what they're going to recommend based on what was presented by the. Uh, yep. Comment, most of the requests that we saw that included a COLA included specifically 8.7%. So I don't know if these department heads were instructed to use that percentage or told that that was in front of COLA, but 8.7% is what we saw. Yeah, I think, that, I, think, I think they may have done that based off of the fact that two years ago, I think, we started using, two or three years ago, we started using the federal COLA. I don't think anybody foresaw a year where suddenly we're gonna be looking at 8.9%. So I think we're gonna to need to have some frank and open discussions with the department heads that that's not necessarily gonna be the route that we're gonna go, but that we need to come up with some solution that is market appropriate, but equitable. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's part of the discussion that, that I wanted to have tonight is that Kelly did do some research about what other towns are doing. Um, other towns right now um, that are, and, and you know, it's it's not necessarily just surrounding towns. She kind of looked at a, <coughs> put out feelers. I hope you don't mind me speaking for you. Oh no, absolutely. Okay. Go right now. She put out feelers regarding. Um, like what towns are doing. Uh, most town budgeting, and, and I get we're Brookfield and it's and, and we, we like to say that we do whatever Brookfield wants to do, but I just want to let people know because a lot of the changes that we've made historically have been to, uh, based on the Collins Center survey, our intent with that and with the pay adjustments that we did at that time was to at least um, ensure that Brookfield could attract the right type of attract and maintain the right type of talent based on having market appropriate salaries. Okay. So the Collins folks came in, they did an overall market analysis, they told us where we had gaps relative to, you know, comparative towns. Um, we made some I think it took us two years, but we made most of the Collins Center adjustments. And then at the time that we did the Collins Center adjustment, we said, hey, we're gonna use federal COLA, because typically it was running two to 4%, right. somewhere in there, to set, uh, to set raises. Well, there's no company out there that's matching what the federal government COLA is right now. Um, though they are, I can tell you from my own experience with my own company, we got a, we got like a 25% higher merit pool. So instead of 3%, we had 4% to distribute this year as a nod to the fact that, you know, there's some wage inflation out there along with regular inflation. Um, the information that she's been able to gather so far is that towns are going between 2 and 6%. Let me just finish. Okay. The towns are going between two and six percent. Yeah. Did you send an email to us on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, no. Yeah. I read that. That I but, yeah. but then they're also exploring certain things that are like hybrid approaches, where they might be doing like two or two and a half percent across the board, but then for lower level wage earners, or no, not for everybody's also getting like a plus seventy five cent raise, mm -hmm. which then for lower wage earners that's a much bigger percent right and for higher wage earners that's a lower. it's yeah. it, it they may not even notice it but at least there's some equity there so it's it's a little bit more of a progressive raise where the impact for lower wage earners is greater than it is for the higher wage earners. and actually it's it's i think it's more fair because everybody's getting the same raise basically right you know um when you look at the spreadsheet uh that that was in your um email yeah. Some of the lower ones 
that you'll see because more of them are in the three to four range. The, the lowers that are two have a 3% step increase as well. Right, so they're really so, a 5% raise. Right, fundamental. so most of these are actually between four and six mm -hmm. than they are two and down. So um, I, I sorted it by tax base, I sorted it by the percentage of um, raise and appropriate to the overall budget. There's all different ways you can play. I sorted it all kinds yeah, of different know. ways. <laughs> anyway, another thing that I did today was I pulled up the federal COLA history yeah. going back to 1975. And, and the average, when you put them all together, is 3.78 a year. But the years, the 80s, when they were, we were in the recession, it, it was, you know, 9, 14, yep. 11, and then it dropped back down to like 7, 3, now. and then 1, 4. Yep. So they, they run a, a wide range, but you can see a little bit of uptick when the economy was really bad. bad. Yeah. So I have that history for you to look at as well. So I, I know we don't have Tom here, so I don't. Now it, no, it's seven o'clock. It's time to start the hearing. Mm -hmm. I have to wait. <laughs> you know what? Actually, since Marty has been very patient and he has waited, I will entertain Marty's questions or comments first, and then we'll move to the town, to the public hearing. Okay. So I also came to this local town regarding increases, both for the state increase, the projected increase for fiscal year 24. Present that information. Sure. Thank you. I'm going to give uh, Karen the source of this data, so if you want to review the comments made by the people that provide sure. the information. Yep. So nobody looks like they're in the four to six percent range. I can only give you what uh, they responded to. Yeah. And Actually, and Warren is in there. What did Warren say? What did Warren say to you? No, Warren isn't in the study. Okay. Hardwood. But this didn't, wouldn't Hardwood necessarily affect those other wage increases. No. Right. And it also. Oh no! It just gives me more data. It just data. gives you the. It just yeah, gives me it, more and data. it just and it also. Uh, did you ask about step for any of these towns? I imagine if there were other impacts to the increase that you would have mentioned, that's not necessarily uh, true. That. People sometimes <laughs> answer the question. Answer the that question you ask as stated. If you would. Yep. So, who's Michael Zelansky from North Brookfield? Uh, I don't remember all their positions. I usually contacted the, uh, either the advisory committee or the board of select. Okay. Because the first one I see is from a town clerk. But yeah, this is this is good. The more information we have, the better, yeah. right? I call How come Barry's down. not on your list? That's the same thing I got in my call. Okay. How come Barry's not on your list? Good, good. Oh. Barry, you probably did you get that from the internet? No, he's got Jessica actually, the TA from Barry. They don't have a projected cola for twenty four yet. That's why. Yep. Cool. The more information we have, the better, right? Yep. Thank you. So, yeah, if you could follow up and get them on the sheet, including the other data that goes along with it, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll give us a good feel for it. So, um, great. So, but like I said, we're not making a decision about no, that tonight. Anyway. Yep. It's, it's more about the, we need to have the discussion. Right. Yeah, is the whole budget completed already? I didn't know that it was. Well, we have a draft regarding what's been requested. So what hasn't occurred yet is either select board recommendations or advisory committee recommendations. So we've got, we've got a, a copy of a draft budget. You know, it's kind of like how we kept budgets like as a rolling process. Um, 
the facts and you're still doing people's budgets. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. So it's all, all the data is aggregated to what was requested. We haven't gone through the process of vetting, approving, and formally recommending. But what we're not doing is waiting until after all that's done to put the damn thing in a spreadsheet. So right now, all the data that's fit to print is in the spreadsheet so that it's a working, living document. That's always the way it should be done. That's the way it should be done, but. We tend to break it or not have clean data or have mismatched copies floating all over the place. And we're trying to avoid that by centralizing it with Kelly. So we're going to hit pause on the budget discussion in order to start the public hearing about the FY22-23 CD, CDBG, I can never say that properly, uh, application public hearing. So I'm sure I have verbiage I'm supposed to read for this. There's some sort of Chris, did you have there was paperwork I gave you? Yes. All right. Yeah. So we are opening we are opening the public hearing. Yep, I did I found it. My copy looks just like your copy, sir. Do you need to come up and speak with us? Uh if, if you'd like me to. Yeah, sure. You want that? Have you have make events, please sit, well, introduce you. yourself, yeah, and, yeah. And, and have at it. Good evening. My name is Christopher Dunphy. I'm a principal planner with the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. I want to thank the town of Brookfield for inviting me here this evening to talk about a proposed grant application to the FY22-23 CDBG, <laughs> Community Development Block Grant Program. So um, just a little bright background about the program. It's a federal program that started in the early 1970s, and, and HUD is the federal organization that is uh, responsible for its overall administration. Uh, by and large, uh, not by and large, every year uh, appropriations are made to fund the CDBG program because, you know, and, and it has occurred because it's a popular program. Uh, the vast majority of funds uh, go to what they say they call entitlement cities based on formula, automatically. You know, here's the formula, here's the money for cities to resolve some of their, their urban issues. Uh, and what remains goes to state governments who provides a competitive program for smaller communities, such as Brookfield. Uh, Brookfield and other small communities uh, throughout the state can apply annually uh, to the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development. And uh, typically, uh, funding for this this program used to max out at $800,000, but this particular year, because the DHCD is sort of behind, uh, largely due to COVID, they, they've sort of consolidated and, and they're, they're putting two programs together in one year and calling it the FY22-23 CDBG. Gotcha. And consequently, they're allowing more funds for this particular year. So I've been working with uh, town officials to, to come up with a, a viable program that meets the criteria uh, under the program. And uh, we identified Kimball Street, okay? Kimball Street, as I see, is, is the last street, really, in the village center, uh, south of the town hall, that really hasn't been addressed. And it, it's got high needs. The street is in extremely poor condition. Uh, it's very narrow. Uh, I've talked to residents in the street that complain about uh, drainage problems, significant drainage problems, and that's going to be a, a large portion of this particular proposed project. Uh, basically, I have a, a, a small little excerpt I'll read uh, regarding what the project will entail. So this project will fund engineering design services and the subsequent physical improvements to approximately 1,400 feet of Kimball Street from the intersection of Mill Street to the intersection of Hyde Street. Incidentally, uh, Hyde and uh, Hayden, Hayden. Were, were previously funded by CDBG, so we're just continuing uh, to, to follow previous work and try to wrap up the improvements in this particular neighborhood. Um, so the work involves the rehabilitation of road and sidewalk, improvements to the stormwater drainage system, and up to three uh, replacement fire hydrants. 
as part of the design effort, an examination and public participation process will occur involving the possibility of making the street one way. And this is, uh, was driven largely by the fact that if you're driving along Mill Street, there's a blind uh, yeah. turn there. And, and They've it, had some fatalities there. Oh, they, they have. have. I think, I think but so it was, what, it was it like a decade ago, up, but they had up. at yeah. least one fatal accident at that corner. So it's good information to know because I, I'd like, you know, data, whatever we have, if someone has information about that, to let me know so I can include it into the grant application. That, that yeah, I, I could be out. wrong, but I think that's the area that they had it. And it was a, a while ago, but still. It so happened. in addition to the hazards, it could potentially make it easier for the residents as well who have difficulty, from my understanding, parking, uh, particularly uh, you know, in the winter. So. It might, it might help in regards to parking as well. Because some of those houses I don't think really have driveways, do they? Um, I think they've come a long way. I think there are driveways now, but it's still difficult. Yeah. I, I know at all times of the year because sometimes they have more than one car, they're parking on the street yeah. and, and whatever have you. So by making it one way, it, it may uh, make it easier for emergency vehicles to move along and, and for residents to park and, and improve the flow on that street. So that's the essence of the project. And uh, uh, again, this project would be start with uh, an engineering design. So the, the group would hire an engineer, and we'd have a public participation process. People can comment during this design phase. And then once it's designed, it will go out to bid for full construction. So you know the, the, the tag is quite high because it's, it's a long street, and there's a significant amount of drainage that, that is involved. Uh, drainage is kind of forced from the hillside, and several residents have, have expressed uh, how that often impacts them. And I know it, uh, it crosses the street in some areas, and, and sometimes ices up. So um, the, the drainage is a really important factor in, in this particular project, and uh, it's a full rehabilitation. So unlike you know it's other projects uh, done by the highway, which would come along and, and do an overlay, no, we're going to fully rehab the street. To, to, to make the improvements long lasting. So that, that's the essence of the, the one project that we're, we're putting forth as part of this community development block grant uh, program for the FY22-23 program. All right, and this has already been through our Brookfield CDBG committee as well, correct? Uh, Actually, no. let me, let me, we, first of all, I wasn't aware that there was a CDBG advisory committee. Yeah. So what we did was it was Dennis Ryan, Kathy, myself, and Chris, and we met just as people who work on the projects, not as a committee. Okay. And so we identified that, and everybody was on board to do it. I have since found out, um, much to my own embarrassment, because I should have checked this first, that there was a committee. You're on it. I know. <laughs> You're I know, on but it. I figured I missed the meeting. <laughs> no, no. I'm, and so I was, first I was told there was no committee. And then I was told that there were people who were appointed, but nobody was sworn in. And then I was told that the people that I thought were appointed that were sworn in weren't actually appointed, they were just sworn in. And long story short, too late. Um, <laughs> The committee actually has not seen or met or done anything with since I've been here because we didn't. I didn't realize it was a committee. So I sent Chris an email today, going, uh, "Okay." I can't say this. I, I have worked with the committee in the past. <laughs> group. It, it seems uh, like one that they would would pref that they would approve. I, so, I, I yeah. would say that I've looked at other documentation in the town. Uh, this project is part of the town's prioritization plan, yep. and it has been vetted. It's been looked at before. It's it's definitely a priority project from the highway uh, department's point of view. The water uh, district says he's in desperate need of the hydrants that are, could fail you know, uh, you know, because of the age and some of the, the equipment involved. So, so it's a priority project. It's on your prioritization plan. And I'm more, it sounds familiar because yeah. it sounds like because I remember seeing it yeah. on the plan. And Do you remember where it landed I on our original plan? I think it kind of sort of disrupted the flow. Of, yeah. I think that would be fair. Maybe. Yeah. COVID sort of disrupted the flow of, of regular gatherings of this particular uh, appointed committee. So well, as I continue to, to hang my head in shame, I sent Chris a, an email today saying, please include, here are all the emails whenever we're going to 
yeah, meet right. and talk about the projects okay. now that, yeah, so. So it's a great group, and uh, I think it could take some of the burden away from uh, the, 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 the Board of Selectmen to sort of vet things a little bit yeah. and, and present, you know, priority issues to the board when they arise. And, you know, the timing is great to reassemble this group as far as I see it, because we're just getting ready to launch uh, improvements on Green Street through the already funded FY21 CDPG. And now here we are meeting as a community to talk about the FY22-23. And uh, moving forward, let's let's get it on and, and start piecing this puzzle together and making improvements throughout the community. Deep, deep breath, it's okay. Yeah, I, it's, it's I just right. came from another public hearing. And we'll it's all right. It <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no, it's all right, yeah. it's okay. So I, I don't, I, I mean, if we had had a committee meeting, I don't see us objecting because it was on the plan the last time we reviewed the long-term plan, if I remember correctly. Am I remembering correctly? Do you, do you remember? Because I seem to remember seeing this on the long-term plan. Yeah, it's been talked about, but I think the public feeling is the CBDG is bonus levels, which is much more than that. The grants have been available for the years for studies. Other things. So right. For even studies. this is more than a road. I mean, it's drainage. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right, but it, it is not always infrastructure. Infrastructure. Right. I know historically the last, the last project was Cotton Hay. Yeah. And you got Green Street. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's part of it is uh, housing rehab and studies and senior center and all of that, which seems to have been Side pushed aside. I must say there is, a, there, those things are definitely eligible for housing, planning studies, other designs, public facilities, but it's hard to identify qualified projects, aside from housing rehab, uh, that fit within the criteria of the CDBG program. So, and, and you know, the, the work at the senior center, it, or at the senior center, work involving a possible uh, facility for seniors is ongoing, to my understanding. Uh, you know, the, yeah. First, to continue to look at this yeah. The, well, the the, co the community the 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 voluntary group that stood up basically said that they wanted to come back in a while after they've set up more programs before they really consider a senior center, right? right. So, um, so I think that was one of the other ones. You're right. That was on the priority list. And I think right now we've tabled just from other discussions with other members in the community right now. Um, it does. I, I haven't seen an aggregated, like, housing rehab because usually we do that with other communities. You currently have an open grant with the town of North Brookfield for housing rehabilitation, which is stalled for a myriad of different reasons that aren't really germane to this particular hearing tonight. But I'm okay. happy so to go into it. So I tell you what, we don't need to go into it as part of this public hearing tonight. But what I would like to understand is that if there's anything that we can do to uninstall that and make it accept, make since the money's already there right so i think to your point there's other things we could be using it for but we already have some of those other things funded and then for some reason it's stalled right versus and it sounds like the the one of the reasons why we're tending to be biased towards infrastructure work is because of that ease of project definition and justification and it's not and, easy and, to and come up with and, a million and, and a half, half dollars, dollars to fix a road, road. Right. So um, what I'd like to do is, is take a look at what's before us, which, which I remember being on the overall CDBG plan. So it's not like we're, we're going yeah, like, right along. yeah, it's been there right along. So, it's, so we're, not, we're not deviating from like the original advice and intent of the committee, if that makes any sense. Um, but I would like to follow up on the, since we have housing money out there that's not being utilized, what do we need to do to unstick it? Okay, so that then we can take the learning from that and when we're, you know, for, you know, drag me over the coals for using this term, when we're looking at 2024, we can consider what do we do besides road work? Because I think it's legitimate feedback but I understand also wanting to complete the, the road work in the center of the village and just be done with it fundamentally. So, I mean, I think you can make a case either way. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's shovel ready. It, it's something we can, we can really focus on and, and will potentially benefit what, how many houses are along that street? I think there's probably like 30. 
Yeah, close to 30, yeah. Well, Between 20 and 30, probably. I've so a couple of the houses are within the previous project area. That yeah, that's power. right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So. so. But uh, um, it, it's, it seems like, so, to me at least, it seems like something that makes sense. In addition, I, I like to say, you know, when I meet with the other communities that, you know, you're applying these resources that are available to areas that are eligible, so you can use your own resources for, for the other areas. areas of the community that aren't. And I think Ryan could appreciate that because I know how, how scarce, you know, Chapter 90 money is and, and trying to stretch that. So we can, when, if we can make these sort of improvements in like the village centers where they're presumably eligible a good part of the time, it allows him to, to use his money elsewhere. Yeah. So, um, but very good feedback, and I agree with you. I think we eventually need to get out of the roadwork business, but this will actually complete that package, and I think it's the last eligible roadwork project. But this is design and engineering. Yes. Yes. And we'll have to go for construction. No, no. No, this is both. design, engineering, and construction. It's the whole, whole package. So we won't be stuck with another design sitting on somebody's desk somewhere that we can't do nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. They so. do allow a longer performance period for this particular grant that they combined it. And the normal programmatic period is 18 months. This will be 24 months and presumably enough time to do the design work and the construction within that performance period. So there's not a lot of leeway. You've got to move pretty quick to get design you do. and everything done during that period of time. So, but you know, I, I just want to thank you know your highway and uh, the water district and, and uh, your town administrator. They've been an instrumental in helping put this thing together and, and, and define the needs and, and, and you know, get it going under this application. Okay. Um. Any other comments, questions? I, I just said, so you're going to maintain the same problem. Uh, you're not going to widen it or? Well, we hope to widen it a little, but there's not a lot of room on the yeah, you not, not a lot of places. Those houses are right up in there. It has there. to be within the, the, within the right of what? Right. Yeah. Uh, so your, all of your drainage structure or modifications will be within that, right? Within that. They would have to be unless okay. some sort of easement is it's necessary, but we don't foresee that at this point in time. Right. Right. Mr. Banish? Maybe this is just one play, but I don't understand general administrative functions uh, like planning, travel, and advertising and how that relates to this project. Who provided the general administrative work for the Central Street project? Was that done outside of? That was done outside of CDBG. That was, that was a different grant altogether. Okay. But The engineer did the, yeah, there were two engineering firms. Two separate plots of money. For the administrative? Yes. Yes. Yeah, for overseeing the project. There are two different yeah, plots like, of money. Like project and two different, yeah. 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 And the highway department did a lot of it and saved the town a lot of money for that as yeah. well. It's a fair question. It's a complicated program with a lot of different uh, nuances associated with the administration of CDBG reporting on multiple levels. And so that's the administrative agency will, will help with the advertising. Uh, I'll be conducting some of the public meetings. What, what advertising? Well, that happened. You have to have Post public, you you have have to have have public hearings. You have to have public hearings and advertising, and it has to go in. Public it has to go in the paper. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, like so. If you're going to have a public no, hearing, you have to advertise it. Look, these are new roads. No. There'll be, a, there'll be a procurement <laughs> process for both the engineering and the construction, which our organization will help steer. And, you know, and, and because we're involved. Um, and we're a, a regional planning agency that doesn't have a building that's funded by taxpayers. So part of that overall administration is referred to as overhead, which actually gives us a place to have a, a, a desk and a, and a chair and a, and a computer in which to work on. So basically they fetch us a million dollars and we help keep them in business so they can fetch us another million dollars. That's essentially it. Yeah. yeah. So. So I will need um, minutes uh, before the application date, you know, even if they're just a draft form uh, okay. to demonstrate. You know, and what's the application date, Chris? March 3rd, two okay. weeks essentially. All right. Uh, so can we prioritize we'll tonight's minutes, please? Thank you, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, 
Do you want to go Do we need to make a motion? Yep. There's a proposed motion on the second page. There we go. Uh, so I make a motion that the town approves the submission of the proposed FY 2022-2023 Brookfield CDBG grant application and their respective activities to the DHCD with allowance for minor budget or program adjustments and furthermore authorizes the CEO to sign required forms when prepared. The Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission will assist the town with the overall management of the grant if funded. I'll second that. Do you I'll want it to be CEO? Because that's you. I was going to say, is CEO. That's you. That's me. Yeah. Do you want it, me to be able to sign them because you've approved the plan? That way you don't have to come down and sign anything and things can get signed on time? I think this is a little bit more restrictive. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah. I think Good. actually the select. That's better for me. Thank you. <laughs> so do we need to designate the. So does the CEO, and just for clarification purposes, in this, with, for CEO, does that mean that we need to have a a quorum of the board or is it just no the it's the chair no i'm asking tonight that they allow you to just go ahead and sign when i finish preparing all the documentation yeah, that's fine and all you have to do is text yeah. me and i can walk over okay. so. all right um at least overnight Did you move that not always during the business day but yeah. if, you, if you if you text me during the day you'll you'll like fairies on oh, your desk you'll have signed documentation <laughs> the next day that's so. nice um Okay, so I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's a wrap on that. I did have a, a number six, uh, just briefly. Uh, of the CDBG. Very oh, quickly. Sure. Uh, I just want people to know that we, we are advancing the Green Street project, uh, and, and we are preparing to send out uh, construction bid documents within the near future. And uh, hopefully it, it comes within budget and we'll, we'll break ground. Uh, you know, the spring on, on Green Street. And it will be disruptive because that project uh, not, is not just the street, replacing the water line and doing some of the drainage, is much shorter, <laughs> but there are multiple components involved. So I just want people to be aware that the Green Street project is on its way soon. Okay. So that's, it, I do feel like our town bird is the orange construction barrel at this one. <laughs> so. <laughs> I guess there's worse things so uh, thank you for that um, anything else sir I just want on behalf of the CMRPC I want to thank uh, uh, for the you know, terrific relationship that we're building with our field and I know some of my colleagues are working with you on, on other endeavors and, and we stand ready to assist in, in any way that we can so great um, could could somebody mark it on the calendar? And would somebody from your organization be out, uh, available to maybe come in our next meeting and talk about that the stranded rehab money between us and North Brookfield? Yeah, that would be me. Do you want to meet with the, the <coughs> CDBG people? Yeah, why don't we do that? Do that instead of a selectman's meeting, yeah, and then you can report it back to the selectman. Why don't we do that? So okay, great. So we'll, we'll post then you it. can all organize and tell me how CDBG you want to be contacted. Yeah. And, yeah, so we'll see if we need oh, to get one on the calendar then. Mm. Even if we have to make it on, I, I don't know. If, I know that the town hall is technically closed on Fridays, but that's usually my freest day. There's nothing wrong with you using it as long as you open it up to the public during the time of your meeting. Okay. So, okay, That'd let's do that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and nice seeing you folks. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh, sure. <laughs> else for you to sign in there? Ah, gotcha. What's that? Is there something else for you to sign in there? In that folder? I don't believe so. Uh, we had... Oh, yeah. It, anybody yeah. that's not signed in, can you I please sign in? Sign. Would it, would it, there, there's two. I actually have a special one for the... We had a... We had an, oh, the town has to oh here it is. A memorandum of yeah, agreement. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Thank you, Karen. Okay, do we, do you, okay, so we need, well, and this is, is, do I need, do we need to vote this separately, or is that part of the motion that we just made? That's the agreement to have um, it, it, CMRPC it, work you sort of, You sort of made the motion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're asking us to help you administer the grant. We're going to work cooperatively to, to, yes. to do this grant. Yep, and this is how you guys do it. 
we've seen that before. Perfect. All right. So this, do you want he, the you, you want, want the original? And, that's okay. And we'll I'll take just a photocopy. Can yeah. you make a copy yeah. before you or, go? Or if you want to send me the sign in and the, that. Oh, you want me to send it together? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I can just do. Well, why don't you now just make a copy for him? Just make a copy for him. Terrific. Thank you, Karen, for keeping me straight on the paperwork. Okay. Yeah, Dennis, thank you for supporting all of this. And Ryan. And Ryan. The real brains of the outfit, the two of you. So. There you go. Good Friday. Yeah. Okay, so that allows us to transition back to everybody's favorite topic. Budget. Good night, folks. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Actually, you know what? While we're while we're while we're not talking budget, let me just redo the correspondence real quick and get it out of the way, and then we'll go back to budget. So we've got a notice from Charter that they're going to launch Stellar TV in high definition on channel 178 or 201, depending on your channel channel lineup. Um, we've got another notice from Charter that we've got the. Charter Communications Annual Complaint Form 500 for 2022. And apparently we had two complaints uh, with average resolution time of three, whatever that means. Above <laughs> is Weeks, four, days. No, four to knows. seven days. Four to seven days. So, uh, and then we have a notice of public, uh, Department of Public Utilities notice of filing and public hearing um, relative, it's dated February 9th, um, indicating that National Grid submitted to the Department of Public Utilities for re review and approval of capital investment project. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to bring some synopsis to this. So here, National Grid's uh, improvement proposal is designed to make um, electric power system modifications to allow um, distributed generation facilities to interconnect in and around Auburn, Brookfield, Charlton, Leicester, North Brookfield, Oxford, Rutland, Spencer, Webster, West Brookfield, and Worcester, Mass. Uh, and basically it supports uh, solar facilities being uh, easier to integrate into the grid. Um, let's see here. The total cost of the system upgrades will be $87.9 million and it will enable uh, close to 100,000 kilowatts of distributed uh, generation to interconnect into the company's uh, main system. Let's see here. It will, a typical resident um, using 600 kilowatt hours electricity per month will experience a monthly bill increase of 13 cents in order to support that capital project. a whole bunch of other language. Um, any person who desires to participate in the evidentiary phase of this proceeding shall file a petition for leave to intervene no later than close of business 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 22nd. There's a whole bunch of legal uh, requirements that it should meet. Um, and one copy of written comments uh, on the Attorney General's notice of retention must be mailed to Elizabeth Mahoney, Assistant Attorney General. Um, the email can be provided for anybody who wants a copy of this communication. Um, let's make sure this one gets posted up on the, our town website, okay. if you don't mind. That way it's out there for everybody to see if they want to read it. Um, so let's go back to the budget. You can do it. That'd be great. Thank you. 
Um, let's see. Was there anything relative to the budget that you wanted to talk about on a high level, like some of the aggregations or changes or anything, or was there anything else that you wanted to cover expressly in this meeting? I, I just wanted you to think about the cola and and what, how you want to approach it. Um, the budget presented the way it is, if it's voted exactly as it is, and there are no further raise and appropriates. We have no revenue information whatsoever. Right. So there's no way for me to project how close we are to the levy limit. There's no way for me to know what it will do to the tax rate. I don't have any of that information. Any of the data that would make voting on any of this responsible. Yeah. At this point. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I would recommend that you you choose a cola, which whichever method you choose to use, and whichever cola you choose to use, and apply it across the board, excluding obviously contracts that are are exempt from and have their own increases. Right. So. <clears throat> yes. Quick comment. Just sure. Process wise, with the cola, I think we said this every year that like. Partly because it's logistically really hard to take it out of the budget and then put it back into the budget when we're voting on them. But even more important than that, I think it's, it would be great if from the top down we encourage departments to level fund their wages, knowing that you guys are going to make a decision on what an appropriate COLA is and we're going to make our recommendation. But it, it just seems like we do these cost of living adjustments to you know, reward employees and try to keep them in the market, keep yep. them whole, and, they, and we should. But it almost like works against us to have them all put in 8.7% and then take it away from them. It's like they all submit their budgets with this higher number. Yeah, I, and, I, and it's a valid it's a valid point. I think the challenge is is that the the putting it in as level funding. And we've done that year over year over year over year. It's been just as disruptive and 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 problematic because then the perception is we're not going to get nothing unless somebody starts fighting for it. And, and it and historically it's just turned. That's what has has turned a lot of this into um, poor communication and very frustrating process. So if we were um, if we had a better history of actually executing it the way you just described it, I would totally agree with you. I think in this instance, you know what, department heads can propose what they want to propose. I, I'd like part of the discussion when the department heads go in, if somebody asked for 8.9%, but it wasn't because of the COLA, it was because of, I don't know, maybe somebody sat down and actually took a look at what the step impact was going to be on their wages, and maybe the person who's 7.9% put it in because they put in a 3% COLA, but a bunch of their people are hitting a different step in grade, and that's why they put their budget in that way, then that's the discussion that I feel like we need to have with the department heads. Do you know what I'm From saying? From a process standpoint, too, like there could be something in place where if they're increasing their wages for a reason other than a COLA, mm -hmm. like maybe there could be process in place where like they have to go to the personnel board before they do that and like their 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 budget should reflect because the budget is what we're putting towards that budget and not necessarily what they're gonna get paid unless it's approved that they're gonna get paid. Right. And and honestly the budget doesn't actually technically directly impact a person's wages. That's what I'm saying. Right. So if they want a raise there should be a process other than submitting a spreadsheet was with a higher number on it that doesn't actually yeah. give them a raise. It just puts more money in that account. Um, but it, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Of course, it does give them a raise. It directly impacts their Well, Well, technically, technically if, if you no. put in a wage. Te so technically, no. Technically, we're, when we're voting the budget, we're voting that that money is available. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing that says that we're obligated to actually write that into the checks that way, fundamentally. I, I, do, I don't think that's actually accurate. I think that if you if the town votes a wage for a specific position, it, that position gets that wage 
It doesn't matter if they take it as a lump sum. It doesn't matter if they take it hourly or how it's split up. They get that amount of money. When it's a lump in a department, that's different. Well, that's what I'm talking about. But, but 90 percent of these are individual people. Mm. You've got three, two departments or three departments yeah. that it's lumped. Yep. I see what so, you're saying. so it does actually. Yeah. Give so for a lot a of these, it does actually give them a yeah. But, I, but you're right about the, the, yeah. the department with multiple employees. That's yeah. different. Where it's yeah. not and specifically I think, spelled and I, out. And I think the place where it's more problematic for them to understand what's being submitted is in the departments. Because I think when there's yeah, multiple you can't employees, see the that's where you can't you can't see yeah, it. So. So what you're saying is like at the I'm just going down on the list. So the treasurer wage that should just be level at seventy eight thousand. I'm saying from a process standpoint, I think it would make sense right. for them. And, the, and then you're and then you're voting. Like your budget is level funded until the select board. Oh yeah. It's a messy operation to set up a national spreadsheet to not know if you're putting in a level funded wage. Or and inflation adjusts, I believe. Right. And then you're going to have another column that's going to apply to the COLA that's determined by the first letter. But it makes it messy. That's why we take the process of using. What's that? No, I'm sorry. Oh. No, but you can't level fund because you have people in the region. No, no, no. We're not trying step. to level fund. We're just trying to make it clean in an Excel spreadsheet to apply the COLA. Uh, yeah, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, but, but above and beyond the coal, you have people who are moving up a step. Right. Or right. And that yeah, in the police department. Yeah. And that should be noted in the budget request. But the only ones who move up step and grade are the police. Well, technically we do. I think technically. No, nope. you did not approve oh, right. the steps. You only approved the grades at the meeting. Okay. So there's no steps for the other employees. It's just the PD and it's in their CBA. Okay. Yeah. I have one more comment. Uh, you have the opposite problem this year about, you mentioned previously about the department heads worried about being level funded and being upset about that. This year we've got the opposite problem. We've got people who have submitted 3.7% COLAs, and I've talked to two department heads who are very unhappy that they're hearing that they may not get that 8.7%. Well, people might not be happy. Okay. No, and I get it, and I get it, and I and I get it because and originally we we made a statement and we stood by it two two or three years ago we said we were going to follow cola right um, again federal cola I, I don't I think if we start having the conversation now people can be upset okay I'm just telling you they were and, and you know what they may be upset and you know what so it, be it. Well, I, I don't want to say that, but I think if we have, I, I think, I think, I think if we have reasonable conversations about it, I think if we do appropriate homework and make sure that we're taking into consideration, you know, not just local market, but within what people would consider, you know, kind of reasonable peer uh, towns, because um, there's a lot more metrics besides distance that that mean it's the right kind of math problem if we're if we're being equitable about stuff. Well, when and you get the columns report, you didn't even make the accounts at very expensive towns. No, they did. I they checked. Oh, yeah, I checked some of the towns. They weren't comparable. Where well, did this 8.7 come from? I mean, when, where did the 8.7? It start? is the federal. That's what the federal call is. This year. Got it from? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's so, that's what I they said. So but other towns didn't say at town meeting that they would. That they would. Yeah. So that's so that's kind of where the process. that's kind of where the the well, well, disconnect is is that yeah. they're relying on what was said. Right. With when it was said, I mean, federal coal is typically one and two percent. It, it was running so. like between two and four percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so, so the time. That's, that's the phone calls that I I got too. Yep. Same as Marty has on right. the sheet. So, well, no, what I'm saying is that at the time. For years, I mean, literally, probably, if we looked at your research, probably for like 10 years prior to that, federal COLA had been between 1.5 and like 4 percent. Right. And so when, so, when that so at, well, so when the statement was made, was made it, it was, was a perfectly reasonable It thing. was anticipated that it would be a lower. Right. And it's typically lower than the state 
Coca-Cola by Cost quite a bit. Cost of living, yeah. So, so you know, people may be upset. I, I get that. Okay, but we're gonna start having that dialogue now. And it's not because we don't think people deserve a, a decent wage or a decent standard of living, but the our goal with saying that we were going to do the federal COLA was that once we did the adjustments for the Collins Center, that we maintain our wage parity relative to the market. And COLA and salary, like market value, don't always track exactly. Okay, so we need to figure out what's reasonable yeah. and, and fair to both the townspeople and the employees. So right. at the time the statement was made that you would use the federal COLA, the federal COLA hadn't gone over 1.7 in the prior 10 years. So, would so you it, was not, it was not a, hey, we're gonna like make everybody rich off of this COLA and, it was and keep give, everybody it was keep everybody whole. It's just a fluke that it's gone up because of the economy over the last couple of years. And, and, so would and you, I anticipate it'll do you die. think it should have been voted with a cap? It was never voted. It was never voted. It was just a promise made by the oh, board and okay. by the finance the advisory committee. It wouldn't even be a discussion if they hadn't said it. That's mm -hmm. that's why the, the people are relying on what they perceived as a promise. That's all. So Okay. Uh, it's not a rule. Yeah. It was a guideline. Yeah, it's a guideline. Yeah. So, um, but I, I think it needs to be a, a, a thorough and transparent discussion mm -hmm. with people. And I, I'm assuming it's going to come up at the department head meeting. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Um, and, and we're not hiding it, right? I'm oh, no, absolutely not. I, I sent right the now, same so. spreadsheet that I sent to you with the comparatives yep. with all of the towns so everybody knows that the local towns and the towns that, that responded when I did the outreach are roughly between two and six with extenuating circumstances. The spreadsheet lists all that. Right. But the average is 3.7% right. if you average all of them together. Right. And if you take out your outliers, yeah. and it's, if we, and it's probably if be, we added these in, it might take it down to like 3.2 or something. Right. Like but if you pull out your outliers, we got a couple of towns in there that are zeros because they don't know what they're going to do yet, right. us being one of them. Yeah. Because I certainly didn't put in the 8.7 for right. Brookfield because. Right. We don't know, right? So, um, so I think I think we have I think we have that dialogue in the department head meeting. Um, I think we just keep it transparent, mm -hmm. and and that's why and, I sent it to them so that it would be transparent and try to, and try to do, it's, do what's reasonable for everybody. Yeah. So, um, yes, Marty. I have another handout for the board. Sure. Well, That's actually a question. You may. Why is Thomas not here again? He comes in late, he leaves early, he's not here. Is there a reason that he's He's an elected here? official, my good sir. Oh, Why do any of our if you're elected and you're representing us people in Brookfield, you just do what you want. That's that the attitude in Brookfield? Because that's the attitude that I'm getting. That's what I'm starting to see in this town. So I just asked the question, is there a reason why he isn't showing up? That's all I want to know. And I'm being pretty blunt and to the point, but I just wouldn't it make more sense to, to ask, ask him Tom? that question? Yeah. No, and I will. But I figured you guys are on the board, so I figured you might have an answer for me tonight. So I will ask him that directly then. If I see him. We have a quorum, at least for a functioning town unit. Which is good. That's a but good it's thing. Nice to have three people. It, it's nice. It's nice, but it's not mandatory. Thank you. There's days I'm not here, Dave. I've missed a couple meetings. Yeah, you don't get too bad. I've been watching. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I, I might get a B minus, but I'm getting a passing grade in minutes. Got it. Okay. This again? Okay, well. You know how Bob Byron's yeah. But I, I love I love though how you cut this off and you don't include all the stuff about what's commercial of commercially available to the tax base and other things this, that this impact is all us. Out, um there's if this came I, out I of the if this came it. out of if this came out of DLS, yes, it it's got all DLS. of the it should have the commercial and industrial off on the right hand side. Uh, not the report uh, okay, well what's, then what's, what's Okay, so then what's your point? Okay, well, 
Bobby Barnes is always telling me how we are more expensive than the other towns in terms of the property tax. Okay. So I took the BLS to approve or disprove what he's telling me. Okay. And according to this table of these 11 neighboring towns, Brookfield is number two in two significant categories, the single family tax bill and average tax bill as a percent of income. Okay. So, okay, so income has absolutely nothing to do with how taxes are done. But it has something to do with the effect on the taxpayer. Right, but it has nothing to do with how the taxes are done, so it's... it's Just trying to say, this is what the taxpayers pay for. They look pretty darn close to the same size bill. So it's about a, it's... It's, it's, just, a, it's just a taxpayer perspective on how the town is spending money. That's all. It's something to take into account for it. So I'm going to go back to, and, and, and let me just... Can I, can I just say something? Through me, yes. <laughs> Marty, if you're using body bonds as a yardstick, be careful. <laughs> and, and the other thing I'm going to tell you is this is not complete data. It doesn't include commercial and it doesn't include the industrial, which plays a huge role. So let me finish. I let you finish. Let me finish. And it's okay. So industrial and commercial plays a huge role in what the burden is on the residential taxpayer. Okay. What we have is not necessarily an overall dollars problem. It's a planning and making this community something besides a bedroom community problem, okay? The communities that have the lower tax rates, if you had the rest of this data on this spreadsheet, which it might not be in the one that you pulled it from, and I get it, but we can go fetch it out of DLS, okay? Is that without that industrial and commercial tax base, Okay, the burden on our residents is going to be higher to provide the same services. That's a fact. But if you look at the bills, they're almost exactly the same. There's a 20 All these difference. different there's a, rates. There's a 20 percent difference in the tax bills from the top to the bottom. Now, where does education? But all the rates are different. So, where does, where the, does the educational the cost come in yeah, to so, factor with any of those? So the way that that would factor in is as part of the. I mean the. The, your overall budgets, and that's some of the other information that's missing off of right. this. So if we want to talk about it, we need to include the one that has the pivot of where the money goes. And you can actually see in this same data set how much of it goes to education, how much of it goes to public safety, how much of it goes to, I, I can't remember the categories, general government. Mm -hmm. There's there's all these categories that are also included in the same data set. Because the way I looked at this originally was. The categories are actually if you look on at, your budget. If you look okay. at East Brookfield total, under Brookfield. General, yeah. total public safety. Total it's 4,000. Well, to me, I'd rather pay the extra 800 to live in Brookfield to send my kids to this school system versus <laughs> that school system. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have a good school system. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just because they have it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> and, and look at the impact of what's going to happen in East Brookfield in a year or so yeah. in reference to the school expenses. Look at East Brookfield and the impact that it's going to be felt in the town with their water work. Look at the impact in Spencer on the Spencer waste that aren't in these fields. Right. But they will be, they will be when, when they have to cough up the money. Right. Yeah, they're gonna, to their taxes the are going to shoot up. So we're ahead of the curve. Right, because we know? paid for these things in advance, functionally. Right. Yeah. Well, We've actually been paid as we go. So. In reference to your argument about not having a large commercial base for spending money, then if we don't have that commercial base to fund the nice things that we want to have in Brookfield, then we don't fund them. That's another perspective. Unless the taxpayers want to, right? Right. So, so it's up to them. Ultimately. <laughs> so at the at the end of the day, we advise, and at the end of the day, the advisory committee advises, and then at the, the end of the day, the vote. town votes, <laughs> right? Yep. So, you know, um, I agree. From a and from a policy perspective, Marty, it's up to us to set the tone. It's kind of like the discussion we just had around wages. Okay, I don't think anybody in this town would accuse me of having been miserly with the employees either when I was with, on the advisory committee or since I've been on the board of selectmen. But even I'm not willing to raise my hand and say the right thing to do is an 8.7% increase. I'm sorry, I can't go there. Okay. 
right? I'll just I'll just say it. Okay. And anybody want most of the folks that are going to be angry have my cell phone number. So if they want to blow it up between now and midnight, I'll answer my phone. Okay. But at the at the end of the day, right? It, it's about being fair and reasonable. Okay. You know what? We're not gold plating the roads. We're going out. We're getting grants. We're trying to get this stuff paid for mostly with, you know, it's our money coming back to us from the state and federal. So I don't feel guilty about it, right? Okay, and you're right, our community has needs. That's why we're eligible for the CDBG money in the village, right? It's because not everybody's rich in town, right? It, it is what it is. But you know what, you can, we can talk about this all day long, the town's gonna make the decision, right? We should make reasonable, responsible recommendations. But not, taking care of keeping the lights on, keeping the roads plowed and keeping them in well maintained is not a reasonable discussion. Cutting our nose off to spite our face with regards to our educational system is, is not where I wanna go, right? I want them educated so that, that maybe there will be social security when I get to your age, okay? Because they need to be able to be making some money to be paying for me. I want them so. well educated because they'll be running my nursing home. Well, that's it. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I, I don't want uneducated people in that position. So. Right. Right. So. I never, ever, ever want to use an ambulance, but I'm more than happy to pay my tax bill so that we have one. <laughs> okay. Right. right. So there's some so, things that so, we need that we hope we never have so to use. It, I mean, and, and I'm interested to find out what we think we're gold, gold plating in this town because you know what, Dave, I know you think I'm a little bit of a spendthrift, but I haven't gold plated anything recently. I hope not. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. All right, so um, that, that's what I'll say about that. So, I, and, and you know what, I will read everything you give me, but be careful because I may start handing you back other stuff that's got other data on there because you know what, I'm really good at statistics and you're right, if you pick the right data set, you can prove anything. But you're picking your data set to prove one thing, somebody else can pick their, their data set to prove another thing. We just need to have a discussion and try to do the right thing, okay? And I will tell you, and I will tell you that our townspeople have made those decisions, and we have lowered the the actual rate per thousand every year for the last. Oh yes, and there are many people that told me how come my taxes went up and rate went down. Well, you know, you can say that, but it's not the bottom line is. Did the tax bill go up dramatically in this town? The answer is yes. So that's all it matters. You're going to go up on the assessment, you go up on the taxes go down. But what's the bottom line on the tax bill? That you get? Do you think anybody's tax bill has been going down the last five years? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, so, so, point, so, 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 so the, bottom, the bottom line here is that we only collect what the taxpayers vote to collect. collect. We don't collect a dime more, not a penny. So if people want to change this, like Beth said, we can argue this all day long. We can discuss it. We can even decide that this isn't how it's going to be. But the town is going to vote what the town is going to vote. We're going to do what they tell us because they're really the boss. So people need to come out and vote and, and participate in the, in the, in the town meeting and the discussions yeah. because that's where the decision is made. Yep. The 70 people that come out to vote to the annual town meeting are the people that actually determine what the tax bills are going to be. Yep. There's also a huge portion of the tax bill you don't have any say on, basically. Mm -hmm. any, mm -hmm. Which is the school. school and your, and your I mean, so, so now you're talking about 12%? Yeah. 12% of the total budget you can, you can control. control. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's about it. And we fight over that 12% like nobody's yeah. business. Like, like I said the other day, you go to a town, town meeting and they want to give the, the cemetery worker a 20 cent raise and they'll argue that for 20 minutes. They'll present the school budget for, for $7 million and there won't be one question and it, and it goes away. Yep, that's for sure true. So. Anyhow, and that is one of the reasons why we have a fully independent school board, is because they don't want us really opining on that. And, and, and the state but, set but, it up that way for a reason. also why 
it needs to be close communication with them to understand what's going on. What's going on? Yep. What, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you need to sit on the school board, but there needs to be dialogue, uh, particularly with the school board, because that's where the money is. Yeah. Very true. So, anything else for the budget for today? No, I just I just wanted to get it in your hands as soon as I could and have you start thinking about what what we what we're gonna what do. you're gonna do with the cola makes sense. So, so um, anything else on the topic you read? Mm -hmm. Great discussion tonight, one and all. So, all right, do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn at uh, seven fifty nine. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Another thing that, that people don't realize is the, the cherry sheet. I know. We had to add, what, almost $400,000 to what we collected last year because of what we had to pay on the cherry, from the cherry.